Okay, so let's take the tour and get you familiar with the toolbar. In this video, I'm going to go through um, all of the different functions, all of the buttons and what they do. Just showing you and explaining uh, each of these different sections so you know exactly how to use it. So as you see here, I've opened the toolbar up in uh, the macro menu here. And I have it opened through the macro page menu here. And we have some different buttons and some different icons that I'm going to explain in just a second. Uh, but the first thing uh, you need to be aware of is that to use the toolbar, you need to first open uh, some sort of, of an instrument. So in this case, I've opened, opened up an instance of presence that I have open here. And you also need to create a MIDI part that you can start uh, to work with. So we're going to start by double clicking here. And this opens up a MIDI part. And in this, in this case here, I'm working with the uh, four bars of a MIDI part. So to really use this toolbar, you have to first enter the MIDI editor by double clicking, for example, here on the MIDI part. And here we have the actual MIDI editor, which is the, the place where we're going to be working and where we're going to be using the toolbar. And the other thing that you need to be aware of is that before you start working with, with the toolbar, you must first activate the scale functionality over here. So make sure that you tick this button and make sure that it's ticked off. And make sure that you have chosen some kind of a major scale. So let's just choose an E major scale here. And as you can see, um, the scale is automatically shown here on the piano keyboard to the side here, indicated by the little blue um, dots here on the keys. So uh, this needs to be activated. Just keep that in mind. If you don't activate it, the toolbar is not going to work. Uh, so just make sure to, to activate this. So now let's get to it. Let's, let's take it from the top. The first thing we have is a button called Populate. When we click the button Populate, the toolbar automatically populates the whole part that you've chosen, you've chosen with a bass note and a starting chord note on top here. So basically, we have a simple starting point uh, to then build upon. And uh, you can always change these. And this is the whole point of the toolbar is that you can move these things around. But to start with, we just have this uh, basic starting point. And you can see that the the, chord, the notes here are put in uh, uh, reaching one bar each. And you can also notice the velocity of each note here, as you see in this little indicator here in the middle of the note, is put fairly low. And I will explain more about this later. But this is the, the first part, the part, the, the part where we are sketching out our beginning. And now we can start to work with this. Uh, the first thing you can consider is whether or not you would like the, the, the chords to be landing on these particular points uh, within the part. If you want, you can go ahead and, uh, for example, move this and then move this over. And you have uh, uh, unlimited freedom when it comes to where um, on this uh, grid here, you place your exact chords. Just make sure make sure that these notes are aligned. But in this case, let's just make it very simple with just every chord landing on on each uh, each bar. So now we have some options for changing these uh, top notes into chords, and this is where the fun starts. I can go ahead and. Uh, choose uh, triads here. And uh, to, to create a triad chord, I simply click on the, the button here that says three voices. And the same goes for chord creation under the on other menus here. We have our seventh chords. If you want to create a seventh chord, you click four voices. And lastly, if you want to create a drop two chords, which are the extended chords, you click either five voices or six voices. So these uh, four buttons here are your chord creation buttons. So let's just try it out for a start here. Let, let's put in a triad here. Let's put a seven chord here. 
Let's put a five voiced chord here and a six voice chord here. And as you can hear, because I have a, an instrument loaded up, uh, the chord is uh, playing in preview when you click the button. So now we have a basic starting point. And uh, the cool thing here is that all of these notes are placed within the notes of the scale. Uh, shoot, uh, using the basic chord structures. And now you have options for either moving the chords up and down or inverting the, cups, the chords up and down. And everything happens within the scale. So you don't have to worry about uh, leaving the scale and making something that uh, becomes too far out when it comes to the, the sort of the harmonic content and the the way that the chords go together. Everything is is in the scale is diatonic, and uh, you can easily move things around and use your ears to to quite quickly create something uh, that sounds coherent. So these are the chord creation options. So let's get to the next three types of functionalities that constitutes uh, the whole uh, bar, uh, toolbar here. So the next functionality we have is uh, moving the, the chord up or down the scale. So basically I can choose this chord for example, and I can say, well, I like this chord structure and I would like to move it up the scale. Then I can click here. And basically now the chord is moving up the scale and I can keep going here and simply just move it up and down. And uh, depending on what step of the scale the chord is in, now we are in E major, so at the moment this chord starts from an, an E and then it moves here to the next, the next note and the next note. So in this case, we're we're dealing with an E major chord. But as I move it up the scale here, then all of a sudden we're starting from a different starting point and in this case, that means that this chord here is actually a minor chord, but we're still using the same basic structure and simply just moving it around. Something else you can do is to go down to the corner here and zoom up a little bit. If you would like to, you want to actually show you the name of each note within the chord here. So let's continue with this and let's say we move this back down here. So that is the first option. The second option we have is what is called inversion. Inversion is the button over here. You can invert it up and invert it down. And now inversion is different in the way that inversion doesn't move the entire chord up the scale or down the scale, uh, but it takes either the, the lower note in the chord or the highest note in the chord and moves it up or down. So let me just demonstrate here. If I click here, you'll notice that the E here moves an octave up to the E above here. And if I do it again, well, the lowest note again moves up an octave. And I can also do it the other way. And uh, in this way, I'm keeping the same notes, but I'm extending, extending them up and down uh, our register. And this can be used to make the chord blend together with the following chord or the previous chord. So let's play around with that. Let's say I invert it down here and then I can of course move it up as well if I want. Or down again. And that's the basic functionality we have here. But then you might be thinking, but why do we have um, these same buttons here under the seventh chords as well as the drop two chords? Well, this is because, that, because of the way that uh, this toolbar is put together there are some slight differences in the way that some of these chords are inverted. So because of that, we have a, an individual inversion and movement uh, menu under each of these uh, chord menus here. So basically, just remember that when you're creating a three-voiced chord and you want to move it around, make sure to use the menu here. When you're creating a four-voiced chord, make sure to use the menu over here instead. And when you're moving up into five voices and six voices, make sure to use the menu over here. <coughs> so 
This is the basic functionality when it comes to chords. But there's one last thing that I need to show you. And this has to do with the bass. So right now what happened before was that we created uh, a random bass note, uh, random bass notes here. And then we put different chords that all are within the, the scale that we're working with. But as we later on start to preview this, which I will show you in another video, which is a little more hands-on, uh, show you, showing you exactly how this is used in practice, then we need to make sure that we are working with both moving and inverting the chord, but also mm -hmm. thinking about where we are placing the bass in relationship to the chord. Because the bass note is going to determine uh, what type of chord we actually end up with. And the way that we do this is that we can simply choose a bass and then we can move the bass up and down the scale as well. So I do like this here and I can choose the area over here and move the bass up and down, up and down. And of course the point here is that you're previewing and listening while you're working with it. And I'm going to show you uh, how to do that in the next video. Uh, but basically you can move things up and down and you can also also easily highlight something here for example and then you can move the bass up and down and then you can just go right over here and move the chord as well invert the chord uh, down and up and say no i'm going to move the bass and the way that the, the toolbar works is that every time you edit something well then that whole selection of uh, of notes plus the bass or chord notes plus the bass is uh, put inside of a loop, meaning that if you are activating your loop down here and hitting play, well then you can keep playing the chord and then in real time you can move the bass up and down, invert the chord and also move the chord uh, up and down the scale. And that takes us to the last button here. As you are uh, using this in real time, once you are finished listening to something here, well, then you just hit the loop all button and the loop all button uh, makes it so that the whole MIDI part that you're working with is looped. So that means we go from editing this part here, previewing, and then looping everything to listen to the next chord and then the loop over again. One last thing to be aware of here is that the way that this toolbar is built is that there are slight variations in the velocity of each of the notes played in the chord. And this is mapped on how I would usually play uh, when I play in chords on the keyboard. First of all, I wouldn't uh, play notes at a very high velocity, usually to begin with. So as you can see, each of these notes have a fairly low velocity. We're at 49.6 here, for example. But the other thing to be aware of is that these chords are, are, are played in a way that the lowest note has a slightly high velocity, then the middle notes, middle notes here have a slightly lower velocity, and then the top note has the highest velocity, as this is, you could say, sort of the melody and the note that you would usually want to stick out the most when you're playing these types of chords. So this gives, gives the chords a more natural sound. And uh, the cool thing here is that even as you move the chords up um, and down the scale, well, you, you'll notice here that you can see that the same pattern here is kept all the way. And even also when we, we invert the chord, the pattern is still kept uh, from the lowest to the highest note in the chord. And our bass notes are populated uh, with a a quite low velocity as well. So this is the basic uh, velocity map pattern, you could say. And of course, you can always change this later on, uh, but, you should, but you should only do that when you're finished using the toolbar and you're satisfied with the, with the chord progression that you made. Then you can go ahead and play around with this, for example, moving this up, uh, even moving the, the velocity of the individual notes as well. And um, I think that is basically uh, everything that, that has to do with, with how this toolbar works. And if you have any kind of question, uh, 
something that I have forgotten to, to talk about here, uh, please reach out to me. The email is inside of the download area. Uh, just write me and I will, I will write back to you as fast as I can and uh, make sure to answer your question. And if I need to, I'm going to also update this video later on to make sure that uh, we have as much information in here uh, when it comes to, to using the toolbar.